an old Norman law which says, the private avenger has been succeeded by the judge. You'd do well to remember that before you decide to take the law into your own hands. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, good morning, Mr. Paladin. Good morning, hey boy. You go out early. Yes, indeed. Nothing like a brisk walk before breakfast. It's a very nice day. Oh, yes. Warm sunshine. It's delightful. Years at the spring and days at the morn. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mornings Paladin. at seven. Uh, you forgot to pick up mail last night. But it's a lot of come for you. Oh, thank you, hey boy. I'm Sid Muller, Beaver Fork, Montana. Hmm? I see. Dear Mr. Paladin, your reputation for taking hold of a situation has reached this town, and I would very like... Uh, uh, hey, boy. Yes, sir? This Sid Muller says he needs my services, wants me to get up there to Beaver Fork as soon as possible, so will you go down to the hotel basement where my trunk is stored and dig out that winter clothing we just packed away? Oh, yes, sir. So bad you had to leave when we have such a nice day in San Francisco. Yes, yes, hey, boy. Oh, well. Mr. Muller enclosed a very handsome check. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. For most of the country, the year was at the spring, but northern Montana was having a late winter. I reached the settlement just 20 miles from Beaver Fork when a blizzard hit. The storm raged for 10 days, and when the sky finally cleared, the snow was piled in roof-high drifts, and the roads were eight feet under. I had found Mrs. Abbott's boarding house, home cooking, clean beds, reasonably comfortable, and my fellow lodgers were quite pleasant. Good morning, Paladin. Morning. Hey, where do you think you're going all rigged up like that? I'm leaving, old-timer. I've already wasted too much time. Oh, now looky here. You ain't aiming to take out over that mountain, are you? I have to. I should have been in Beaver Fork over two weeks ago. Well, it must be important if it can't wait till the trail clears up. A man sent for me, uh, Sid Muller. Said you know him? Sure, I know Sid. Know the rest of the bunch, too. There's uh, four Mullers up this way. They ain't been in these parts long, about a year, maybe. Oh, uh, well, you said he needed me. Have you bothered to take a good look at the snow hanging on them peaks? <laughs> Well, there's lots of it. Yeah, just like it wasn't 59. Oh, big jiggers, I'll never forget that. What happened? Avalanche. Oh. Uh. Biggest avalanche ever heard of in these parts. Well, I'll just have to take my chances. Bye, old timer. I followed the floor of a wide white valley for several miles, then turned toward the mountain. A hunter passed me, his rifle slung easy across his arm. He smiled, waved, and went on, and I started the climb. Halfway up the slope, I stopped to rest on a narrow ledge. Below me, on the flat land, I could see the hunter, and apparently he had spotted his quarry, for he raised the rifle to his shoulder 
and fired. I looked up ahead to see if he had made his kill. The body of a man lay sprawled in the snow. And then it came, like a whisper at first, and a slow, almost gentle movement, and then a low rumble that built to a deafening roar, and a great white cloud that moved toward me and met me. This rot gut. Mm. Mm. <laughs> rot gut is right. Discriminating man. I like that. Sorry, but it's the best I can do at the moment. You better lie back. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will. Well, looks like you're going to make it after all. I was doubtful for a while there. A uh, mountain fell on me. Takes a little time. It's all right. Take all the time you want. Hey, where am I? What is this place here? An abandoned sheep herder's cabin. I found it holed up here during the storm. My name's Daniel Carr. Did you dig me out of that snow? Mm, a handful at a time. You were under there three hours. Three hours? You fell by a boulder, created an air pocket. That's how you managed to survive. Usually one slide will start another. You were risking your life to rescue me. Perhaps. Well, how did you get me here? I carried you. You're quite a load. Why did you do it? Well, after all, I realized it was the reverberation from my shot that caused the slide. I felt responsible. No, but why did you take the trouble to save me? I, I saw you deliberately shoot a man. I know. But you see, when I mean for my gun to kill a man, I'll point it at him, take aim, and pull the trigger. Didn't it occur to you that I'm the only witness to the murder you committed? Well, that's true, of course. But that's beside the point. Well, much obliged. No, don't mention it. Now I'll see if I can rustle you a bite to eat. <laughs> about best-selling records. Here's a familiar tune about America's best-selling filter cigarette, Winston. Winston gives you real flavor, full rich tobacco flavor. And you know, that's because only Winston has filter blend up front. Choice, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. No wonder Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. Smoke Winston. I recovered from the shock and exposure in a couple of days. But it developed I had a badly wrenched knee and couldn't walk. I was helpless and became further indebted to Daniel Carr for excellent care and, I must admit, as pleasant a companion as I had enjoyed in some time. Now, wait, the queen takes the rook. Yes, yes, but the other white rook takes the queen. Ah, see? but the interposition of the knight then no. postpones the mate. Only no. one more move. No, no. Well, someday when we have a chessboard and pieces, I'll show you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll be looking forward to that. Ah, gone. What's the matter? Looks like I'm out of tobacco. Oh, well, hand me my rucksack. Mm -hmm. Here. Well, ought to be an extra can of tobacco in here. How's the leg feel today? Oh, it's much better. Good. I guess I'll have to face up to the fact that I have a job to do. Yes, I will too. Uh, where's that tobacco? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Good. Uh, keep it. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, here, this letter fell out of the sack. Uh, from the man I have business with in Beaver Fork, Sid Muller. That's the man I have business with. Oh? 
He's next on my list. List? To kill. Why? I haven't asked you any questions, Paladin. Yeah, that's right, but does Sid Muller know he's on your list? I think he does. Well, uh, Daniel, I... I think it's only fair to tell you. My gun is for hire. Now, Muller sent for me, probably to protect him from you. Then perhaps we'll meet again. I sort of hated to say goodbye anyway. It's been very pleasant. Are you leaving? I made my plans this morning, as soon as I saw you could get around. So I'd better get started, especially if you're going to be working for Muller. I'd hate to have to point my gun at you, Paladin. And I would, you know, if you got in the way of the job I have to do. Well, so long. Thanks again for the tobacco. Thank you for saving my life. It was a pleasure. For three days in a row, I tried to work my way down the trail from the cabin to the valley. And each time, my knee gave way and I had to give up and crawl back over the hard-packed snow. But on the fourth day, I made it. It was bitterly cold and an icy wind was blowing. But I saw that the roads had been cleared and I decided that my best bet was to return to the settlement and get a horse. I had gone only a short distance when I saw a wagon coming toward me. Ho, oh, ho there, ho, oh, oh. ho. Well, Paladin. Hey, old timer. Lordy, man, I never figured to see you again till the spring thaw. Yeah. I was thinking you were stretched out stiff under that hunk of snow that come down off the mountain. As a matter of fact, I was, briefly. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Mind if I climb up there with you? No, come on. All right. Here. Here. There, and get one of them there blankets wrapped around you. Yeah. All right. This here's a real snapper. It sure is. Say, where are you headed, old-timer? Beaver Park. Come on, get up. Yep. I'm the bearer of uh, pretty darn disconcerting titans. Yeah? Yep. After the slide, we was all out there pulling around the snow looking for you. And out in the valley there, we come across Abe Muller. Rifle shot. Abe Muller? Yeah, that's Sid's brother. Well, three, four days ago, Franklin, that's another brother, started over from Beaver Park to pick up the remains. He had to wait till the roads was clear, you see. Well, he never showed up. Because why? He was found this morning. Rifle shot? Yep. Looks like somebody's setting out to exterminate the Muller boys. Yep. Looks like a real blood feud. A blood feud? Hey, wait a minute. Uh, Old timer, where were the Mullers located before they came to Montana? Well, they've always been kind of tight mouthed about themselves, but I always figured it was Texas. Well, sure. Dalby County. Judge Oren Carr. Daniel Carr. I don't seem to follow you, Paladin. Judge Carr was an Easterner, appointed by the president to preside over the court in Dalby County, and the first case that came up before him was a murder charge against a man named Muller. Yeah? Now, he was found guilty, and Carr sentenced him to be hanged. The day the sentence was carried out, five men broke into the judge's house and strung him up by the neck from the rafters. What'd they do to the varmints? Nothing. But everyone knew that the five lynchers were Muller's sons. You mean you think these here Mullers are the same ones? And as I recall, several months later, the oldest Muller boy was ambushed. Yeah, that must have been when the others left Dolby and came up here. Huh. Daniel Carr. Judge Carr's son, of course. The judge's son? What, what are you saying, Paladin? I'll explain later, old timer. Let's get a move on. All right. Get up there. Come on. Come on, get it. Dandruff bothers most men, most women too, so listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fit Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, 
Gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. We didn't move quite fast enough. When we reached Beaver Fork, we found a crowd gathered around a blanket-wrapped body hanging over the back of a prospector's mule. It was Vernon Muller. He'd been ambushed. This here's a getting pretty scary, Paladin. I agree. Is Sid in this crowd here? Yeah, that's him over there in the red Mackinac. Oh. Sid Muller? Yeah, who are you? My name is Paladin. Paladin? Fine time for you to be showing up. Yeah, I know. You're too late to be of help to me. Uh, that's why I want to return this check to you. Here. Uh. Now, Sid, your brother Franklin was found this morning. Frank? He's been shot. He's dead. Frank, too. You hear that, men? Frank got it, too. I tell you, there ain't nobody safe while that crazy killer's running loose. Sid, the only life in danger now is yours. You better get to the sheriff and ask for protection till the man can be found and brought to justice. Justice? Look, Paladin, we'll see that he's brought to justice, just don't you worry. Fellas, the prospector that brought in Vernon here says there were some tracks out there in the snow. We gotta get us some hounds and go after that crazy killer. And when we get him, we string him up. Come on, fellas! Them fellas is real worked up, Paladin. Yeah, I think maybe I know where Daniel's headed. I've got to get to him before that mob does. You're so all fired concerned about this fella, you'd think he was beholden to him. Old timer, I'm beholden to him for my life. Daniel? Daniel, let me in. You're working for Muller now, Paladin. This time my gun is pointed at you. I'm not working for Muller anymore. I want to talk to you, Daniel. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to keep my rifle on you. Go right ahead. Come in. Close the door. Daniel, they're coming for you. A crazy mob. Sid Muller with them? Yeah. Good. I've been waiting to get to him. You can't stay here. I'm not going to move until I kill Sid Muller. Daniel, you're an intelligent man. What do you mean by this vendetta? Paladin, my father sat as a duly appointed judge. In the case of the state of Texas versus Lee Muller, he gave an honest and impartial judgment based on the laws of our land. So the Mullers took the law into their own hands and killed your father. Now you've taken the law into your hands to kill the Mullers. Where does it end? Doesn't matter. There's still time, Daniel. Give yourself up to the law. Tell your side of the story. No, Paladin. I have a job to do. Look, they're on their way. They're coming for you. I'm staying here. And don't interfere. Daniel, listen to me. Stay back. No. I won't pull this trigger, but I... Daniel, I... Sorry, Paladin. Mm. Paladin. Oh. Hey, Paladin. Oh. oh, hello, old timer. Well, it's about time. You sure must have got yourself a good whack on the head. Hey, hit me with a rifle butt. My, I thought you'd never come in two. Yeah, I. Th- hey, wait. The mob. Oh, t- they they done their dirty work and gone already. What happened? Well, that bunch, uh, I was trailing along with them. We got to this here place, and, and, and this fella, well, nobody's expecting it. He just steps out big as life. Somehow he got a bead on Sid, and just pointed his gun, took aim, and pulled the trigger. Sid just dropped. And then that crazy mob, they had the rope all ready, and they... Well, Paladin, it sure wasn't pretty. Daniel was determined to end it, and I couldn't stop him. Terrible waste, old timer. Munchy Munchy Fritos Corn Chips. And since Fritos Corn Chips are fresh as spring itself, it seemed appropriate to give you a springtime gift. So Fritos have attached a free package of flower seeds on their large bags as their salute to spring. There's nothing for you to mail in. Just buy a large bag of Fritos, and there, right on the bag, is your free package of flower seeds. 
They're the finest seeds you could get anywhere. Genuine burpee seeds. And there are three varieties. Beautiful zinnias, snapdragons, or petunias. Get yours, while they last, free flower seeds on the large bags of Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. It's not polite to smack your lips, but you can't help it with Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. Come in. Oh, hello, Miss Wong. Oh, read it the green room, Mr. Pilot, don't Oh, my. Uh, What's all this? Oh, uh, some clothing, Miss Wong, winter clothing. Oh. Hey, boy is going to put it in my trunk in the basement, and then he's going to push the trunk away over in the corner. We won't be needing it again for a long time. Oh, yes, sir. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? What's up, Monsieur Parleyden? Hmm? Oh, that François Villon is translated by Rossetti. But where are the snows of yesteryear? And I was just thinking... Oh, yes, sir? I don't care where are the snows of yesteryear. Oh. I don't care where are the snows of this year. I don't care where are the snows of next year. Only wherever they are, that's where I don't want to be. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, I'm Burgess Meredith. Did you know there are over three million persons in America who are hard of hearing and not doing anything about it? Maybe you or some member of your family is hard of hearing. Well, fortunately, I've never had this problem. Some of my friends and family have. Now, a few years ago, your excuse might have been that you didn't want to wear a bulky hearing aid. But today, it's a different story. I've just seen the new Super 60 hearing glasses developed by Mako Electronics. If I hadn't known they were hearing glasses, I would have guessed them to be regular eyeglasses. It's a wonderful way for any hard-of-hearing person to conceal a hearing loss. There are styles for both men and women. For an interesting free booklet on hearing glasses for yourself or a friend, stop in at Mako or write to Hearing Glasses, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Don't wait until your hearing gets worse. It may be too late. Send for your booklet today Write CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Paul Dubov, and Barney Phillips. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.